Headingley began in hazy, oppressive conditions, conditions that looked to me as though they would favour the pace bowlers of the side fielding first. Well, Tony Gregg won the toss for the third time in a row, and a very good toss it was to win two, with England needing to win this test match at Headingley if they would have a chance of regaining the Ashes. The teams, well, the England selectors left out Hendrick and Lever from the 13 originally nominated. They made Bob Wilmer 12th man, and the Australians this time brought in Gary Gilmore and left out Alan Turner. Dennis Lilly bowled the first ball of this Headingley test match. It's Lilly to Wood. short legs, Walker the finest of the two, Thompson just behind and Gary Gilmore just in front of square, there's Gilmore the replacement who's really forced his way into this side with a series of excellent performances and a first cap for England for Phil Edmonds with Woolmer the man left out, Hendrick and Lever unfit, Hampshire recalled to the test scene on his home ground here and Keith Fletcher coming back, there then the two sides as Thompson moves in He's confidently put through mid-off and that ball streaking away on this quick outfield. Edwards chasing it down the hill, just about going to cut it off. So three very easy runs there to John Edwards. A leisurely, almost medium pace half volley there from Jeff Thompson. He's looseness to start things off and Edwards is underway. Thompson to Wood. That's a good shot, four runs, half volley outside the leg stump, beautifully clipped away by Borry Wood, confidently off the mark. And that ball hitting the pickets there, a couple of seconds after it left the bat. This head in the ground being something of a lucky one, of course, for England. They haven't lost the test much here against any country since 1966 when the West Indies beat them. That's another good shot. It's another four runs. In swinger slanted in, over pitched, of course, round at Barry Wood's legs, and very nicely clipped away for four more. That's another good shot. The pitch moved nicely into position. Edwards chasing it at cover. He'll cut it off. And the two openers will only take two. And as Edwards, one of the great uh, cover fielders in the game of cricket at the moment, did some really startling work at Lords in the Test match. Saved run after run there. And looks like having a busy day again today. Good shot by Rich. And he collects two more as Ross Edwards is kept busy in the covers. So we're going to see the left arm quickish over the wicket attack of Gary Gilmore to Edrich. Found the gap, a big gap there, mid on very wide. Max Walker a chase up to the far boundary. And they'll settle for two runs. So I see now how Barry Wood copes with Gilmore coming uh, left arm over the wicket into him. Two short legs both behind. Four slips in the gully. And that's LBW, and that's the breakthrough, and Gilmore has done it again. And he's off the mark with four again. Except for the way that he got underway at Lords in the last test match. Nice square drive from David Steele. Gets him moving, brings him four. Had to reach a long way for it. very fast both sides of the ground 
No real chance there for Max Walker to cut that off. So Goodrich uh, takes his first boundary of the morning and moves on to 13. for steel and in fact it'll run into the boundary that uh, really is fast on that side and it's also downhill and 50 up for England with uh, that three to David Steele he goes into double figures on 11, 51 for one now, and it came up in 71 minutes. We're in the 16th over now. Four more. The thick outside edge again, David Steele. Edwards. That's well favoured. And no need to chase that. Full toss from Dennis Lilly. Got the treatment it deserved. John Edwards now goes on to 24. time nobody down there hurrying away for four more and our floors are not only for that boundary but for the 50 partnership between these two incredibly good time too for a test match just a shade over a run a minute 53 minutes for those 50 runs coming together when the last wicket went down at 25 me and chapel now been forced to put the extra man back a short one hooked away deep long leg this time very fine indeed no, this man certainly isn't frightened of anything bolt short at him it's a good shot really hammered that away off the back foot wasn't all that short but very quickly into position Six boundary now to David Steele as he moves his score on to 35. England 83 for one. It's a great shot. All the way for four runs. Half volley, nicely timed. A big gap for extra cover. Edrich finds it. that slightly later able to put it away square this time on the off for four and two over pitch balls by Gilmore there getting the right sort of treatment that's a better one the bowler up all the slips up that pitch in somewhere about right So that must have been reasonably close. Gilmore now to bowl the last over of the morning's play. And he looks absolutely disgusted with it. It wasn't a very wise move there on the part of John Edrich. Seemed a little bit close to take a chance with. Coming back an awful long way. England are 98 for one, the first over after lunch, it's Walker to Edrich. A risky shot for four from John Edrich. 100 up. In only the 29th over of the innings. 
all very much to the liking of this splendid crowd. So John Edrich moving into the 40s, England 102 for one. That's four of them and he's there. So John Edrich making his 50 in two and a quarter hours, just a shade less with seven fours. 51 out of 112 for one. That's off the edge and that's over the top. And a stroke of luck there for David Steele, who was aiming to pull that wide of mid on getting a top edge for it. So the thick edge, looks like four runs. And here today, he's made 42, and he and Edridge have taken the score to 125 shot nice timing that no chance of Edwards cutting that off Edwards just leant into that and it fairly raced away down the slope and he's got him it's a good catch by Ashley Mallet and well bowled by Thompson He's worked very hard today for that wicket. John Edwidge is the man out for 62. A very good inning from Edwidge. And Thompson, the man who has broken through with the second wicket for Australia. 137 for two now. A valuable breakthrough for that and a good innings from John Edwidge. That was a firm stroke off the back foot. He hit it quite hard to Ashley Mallet and Mallet took it easily made a difficult chance look quite simple 137 for two the crowd standing to Edwidge as he leaves the field that partnership went from 25 to 137 here's how the wicket fell Ashley Mallet taking it neatly Greg Chappell, the man congratulating. Other way, all right. Looked away smartly. Square on the onside. And again, the fast outfield having the last say here. Ball skating away from Doug Walters the whole time. there skidding away for four more and if you edge a ball outside the off stump that's the best place to edge it In the middle of that all right have to do take the single the way out of the firing line for a minute brings up the 150 Quite a useful scoring rate, 150 coming up in the 44th over. That must be fairly close. Possibly just going to miss Lake Stump. Beaten with the extra little bit of pace and swing there. And coming in again very sharply indeed. Walker thinking there's no justice at all here in this test match head in the well, a number of very good in swingers and one going on with the arm <laughs> the top of thickish edge racing away down the hill no chance of stopping it at all
So after labouring for a little while, David Seal goes through to uh, second 50 in this Test match series. Opening at Lords with an excellent 50 and once again doing a great job here for England. Coming in at number three. And he's made 50 out of a total of 159 for two. That's better. And that's LBW. Yes, that looked a good one. That's where he's been looking to pitch it the whole time. Coming in late. Hampshire on the back foot, as so many of the England cricketers were in that Prudential, and little hope at all once that ball comes in sharply. So Hampshire, the uh, third Englishman to go. Out for 14, LBW to Gilmore. The score on 159. Gilmore already with one wicket to his name. Coming in from this football stand then. Watch for the ball coming in from round about off stump. A little delay there, but umpire constant working out the situation. Up goes the finger and out goes John Hatcher. Devaskin. It's a useful ball. It's the one that didn't come back. Um, Fletcher there in a little bit of a tangle. He's caught him just before T. The fourth wicket goes down. Fletcher is out for eight. Caught at gully. And Steele remains 69 not out. So that is a disaster for England in a good little spell of bowling from Dennis Lilly, where he beat Fletcher a couple of times and then had him well caught by Mallet at gully. So Fletcher is out for eight, it's 189 for four. Steele is not out, 69. They must be lucky trousers there that David Steele's wearing. If he wore them in his first test match, he's gonna stick by them. Might be able to afford a new pair after all this test match money coming in. And so great comfortably away there. Pushed into the vacant spaces, Mallet chasing at the ball, gathering pace the whole time and leaving him quite standing. Tony Gregg now has completed the test match double of 2,000 runs and 100 wickets. And only his 41st test. Uh, Wilfred Rhodes and Trevor Bailey, the only other two to have previously done that. And that's four runs from the moment it left the bat. Over pitch, beautifully put away through mid wicket. So the 200 coming up for England, 202 now for four. And Greg moving on to 11. Thompson now to steal. And that's straight up in the air, and it's Walters underneath it. And it's taken quite safely, and Thompson's extra pace getting through there. As Jim Laker mentioned just a few minutes ago, Steel has had no trouble in hooking Lilly, but Thompson has troubled him, and he is out now for 73. Fort Walters, Old Thompson with the total at 213 for four. So, a tremendous two matches for David Steele at Lords. He made 50 and 45, and here at Headingley today, he has made 73. Can't do very much better than that in your first two games. That's four. Straight over and across his head. And that's the one for that. Koska, oh, he's almost picked it up. Where that would have been. 
for the useful piece of captaincy as well as a useful catch. I don't really believe uh, he plays a man exactly in that position for a batsman uh, not getting the ball off his toes, but uh, he almost pulled it off. Pitch driven firmly past the bowler, hurrying away down to the football stand there for four. Well, Mott's been batting consistently well again this year, averaging 47. Reached his first hundred in his last innings. It's Warwickshire at uh, Birmingham. And clipping that away, fine for four. No deep long leg. Very interesting bowler to watch here today. Specializes on the in swinger. There's a slight change of action, in fact, when he bowls the other one, the one that swings away from the right hander. And that's the one. And the keeps the outside edge all the way along the ground there for four more. Guided away by Greg to bring up the 250 for England. Well, Tony Greg and Alan Knott saw them through to the close of play. Greg 46, Knott 7, 32 extras in the total of 251 for 5. And that is a. Oh, that must be close indeed, yes. Alan Knott, LBW to Gary Gilmore. That one swung a long, long way from outside the off stump. There it is again. And not a great shot there, it wasn't far away from Mullet again. No third man there, he's chasing it away, just cut it off. Good push, pokey shot there by Chris Hole, but brings in three runs. And he's bowled him. And Gilmore strikes again. So his fourth wicket. What an encouraging start for the left arm bowl in his first test match in this country. And Chris Earl leaving quite a substantial gap there. So that's the eighth wicket down. The England score standing on 284. That's it, caught in the gully. Five wickets to Gary Gilmore. John Snow not there very long, two or three balls. Splendid, smart catch in the gully. Ball there, leaving the right-hander. Just escaping over the top of Ian Chaplett's flip running down the hill for four runs. And that's it. We can make under the pad and he's out court. Another shout, not for LBW. And what a day it's been then for Gary Gilmore. That's his sixth wicket in his first test match against England. A little nick under the pad and flying into the slips. Well, 288, that's nowhere near as good as England would have wished at the start of play this morning. The unfortunate run out to Tony Gregg, 51, uh, early in the session, set them back on their heels. Alan Knott, 14, the tail really failed to wag in the face of some splendid swing bowling from Gary Gilmore. Five for 37 this morning, the Australians took, and Gilmore took four of them for 12 runs. It was a sensational performance by this talented left-hand all-rounder playing in only his first test match against England. 
Well, the Australians, I should think, were very, very happy with that situation. 288 on the board. They needed a good, solid start from their openers, McCosker and Rodney Marsh. And we see now John Snow bowling the first over to Rick McCosker. It's really well bowled. Good piece of bowling, but it didn't look as though there was a deflection. He's missing that by a reasonable margin. Very good. Jackie Hampshire, and he's out. That's caught. And Chris Old has broken through for England. In his third over of the innings, McCosker is out without scoring. Well caught by Hampshire, very low down. And the Australians are eight for one wicket. Fine catch that by Jack Hampshire. Very low down. And it just cut away a little bit from McCosker. It was well picked up by Hampshire, who's a fine close to the wicket fieldsman. Been a fair amount of talk at the start of this match about this wicket spinning, but it's certainly been the pace bowlers, the seamers, the swingers who've done the damage so far. Six wickets already fallen here today, and snow to marsh. Fine bit of work there by Fletcher. Arms in the air, but shuffle very quick between the wickets there. Backed up well, safely home. change for Keith Fletcher to get a round of applause from this Haddingley crowd. It's a half volley, four runs. And Ian Shuffle fairly throwing himself at that one, an enormous gap there. No mid-off for Jon Snow. Fine straight drive by Ian Chuffle, and that'll hurry away down to this boundary. Gathering pace the whole time. Ian Chuffle being very quick onto these two half volleys, one from each bowler at him now. Hitting that with considerable power. Shot half volley dispatched again most thoroughly by Ian Chapel. And the Australian captain dealing very much in boundaries here. It's Greg now to Marsh. And he too taking advantage. He really put everything into that. And that over pitch ball driven most forcibly through mid off. And the left hander. First time he's really let the bat go. Shuffle knowing how firmly he dealt with that. <laughs> That's hurrying away for four more. Right through mid wicket, Edmund's chasing it, but the ball, as ever here, gathering pace, giving him no chance at all. Well, I think this is possibly England's last hope regarding swing because if Barry can't swing it at his pace, then I don't think anybody is going to swing it. And if that's the case, then we've got to revert to spin and see what happens. But uh, we'll wait and see, because Barry does swing the ball if there's any chance of swinging it at all. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this over. It's Barry Wood who broke through at uh, Old Trafford the other day when Hampshire played Lancashire in the Gillette Cup match. That's the situation there. Marsh not out 20. Ian Chappell not out 24. And Marsh has strike to Barry Wood. Underwood is the fieldsman. He'll cut that off down that long leg. Marsh will just take the two runs.
The 50 comes up now for the Australians with that leg by. Comes up in the 22nd over. John Snow, the second wicket for England, 53 on the board, a good piece of bowling from Snow. He has his first wicket to the cost of nine runs and the total 53 for one with Marsh, bowled for 25. Two wickets down now, Rodney Marsh, the second, McCosca having already gone without scoring. There's how the second wicket went down. It was a good leg cutter. Deliberately bowled. You can see the fingers cut across the top of the ball and Marsh was beaten for pace and movement off the pitch. First ball now to Greg Chapel. Jackie Hampshire's put him down. And that was very well bowled by Snow again. Not an easy catch, that. It was flashing between the two slips. Good leg cutter, outside edge. Greg started to go, and Hampshire diving away across to his left. That's a good shot. Nice stroke from Ian Chappell. Firmly hit off the back foot. Beautiful timing. And four runs to take him on to 30. As in the England innings, all the work's been done by the seam bowlers. So far for England, Snow Old, Greg and Wood, the four who've been in action. It's Greg Chappell who's made seven now facing Snow. Not quite where intended. Going to get a couple of runs for it. Looking to chop it away to third man. Ball hurrying on a little bit for him. No chance there in the slips. The ball played down well in front of Greg. That's dropped again. So both chapels drops. Now again, the unlucky bowler, Chris Ole, the culprit this time at third slip. And that, I suppose, as slip catches go, one that you certainly would expect to be taken in a test match. Quite a nice pace there. So the two Yorkshiremen in the slips. Both the offenders, Hampshire missing Ian. And now Chris Ole missing Greg. So the luckless John Snow in a fine spell of bowling has got one for 16 after 14 overs and should have had three wickets by now. some appeals in this match one after the other appeals been ringing out ever since play started here yesterday morning under which turn here to come into the act Philip Edmonds coming into the attack with Australia on 77 for two Ian Chappell 35 Greg Chappell 12 37 overs have been bowled and uh, Phil Edmonds certainly going to Come on, a bowl at the end, which normally favours the spinners a little more. That's coming in from the football stand end here at Headingley. And a much more attacking field being set for Edmonds and place for Underwood. Silly point, a slip under short leg for him.
nicely off his legs for a single by Greg Chappell. So interesting now to compare the styles and techniques of uh, the two leading slow left arm bowlers in the country at the moment. Phil Edmonds bowling a little bit more in the old fashioned style. Giving the ball a bit more air and possibly spinning it a fraction more. He certainly made that one straightened. An encouraging sign. Spin there this time. Underwood again at the far end. And Keith Fletcher showing the Yorkshire crowd how to field. Turn to move in smartly from mid wicket. Fletcher now at first slip, Hampshire at uh, second slip. Tony Gregg's moved out of the way and to direct affairs from short extra cover. second over. Oh, would you believe it? A great start then for Phil Edmonds. Really very short indeed. And in the air, Chappell looking to hook it away for four. He's been waiting for one of those for a long time. So the third look it down. Ian Chappell out for 78. Edwards taking guard, his runner in the customary position just by the square leg umpire. Oh, Ross Edwards really going to be surrounded here. Two slips, a gully, a silly point. And the wicket isn't a sticky by any means. It's just uh, a quiet little bit of kid stakes going on. Derek Underwood being directed out on the boundary at the square leg in front of the players' pavilion. And that must be it. Yes, LBW first ball, and Phil Edmonds is on a hat trick in his first test match. Ross Edwards offering no shot. One ball, he and runner departing back to the pavilion. And Australia have turned to slump here now on 78 for four. Uh, two in two for the young Middlesex cricketer in on his second over in Test match cricket. Well, there go the unhappy pair. And that's really looking out. Great error of judgment there by Ross Edwards. So the whole crowd now moving, sat on the edge of the seats. There's a great Princess Fielders clustering around Doug Waters. Two slips, a gully, a silly point, two short legs. Barry Wood coming up now to take up the position. Don't know whether he's moment hiding behind Tony Gregg or not, but he's in there close. So the hat-trick ball coming in, Walter's facing. Good for one. 
So Doug Walters survives. Edmund surprisingly pushing that through quite quickly. And that's dropped. It's a good ball there. Held back. So a second catch down by John Hampshire. Nicely held back. A little bit of spin. And away to John Hampshire's right hand. And that's it, and he's caught him. Swept straight into Derek Underwood's hands behind square, and Greg Chapel goes really off the middle of the bat. So what a fairy tale start for Phil Edmonds. Taking both the Chapel's wickets, he's got rid of Ross Edwards, and all this has happened in the space of three overs. And that was really middled by Greg Chapel, just the one man round the corner. Underwood tossing the ball high in jubilation. That's out. A loose stroke from Gilmore, a shorter ball from Underwood, and Tony Gregg takes the catch away to his left quite comfortably at shoulder height. And Australia now 96 for six. A great breakthrough that. The first time Gilmore has really set himself for an attacking stroke. And he is out for six. Court Gregg bowled Underwood. 96 for six now with Doug Waters not out 12 and England through to the tail. Derek Underwood, and he's put it down. Would have been Edmund's fourth wicket. It wasn't a difficult chance either. Walters picked it up from roundabout leg stump, hit it in the air, and Underwood was specially placed there. It wasn't a particularly well-controlled shot, but the ball moved it Underwood at the second attempt. It's bounced away in front of him. turn there he's got a big heart that's the third trip he's made with uh, that number of points in the little box there must be a, a thirsty corner four runs and the hundred comes up for Australia but they've lost six wickets in bringing it up Quarter slip by Chris Old. Max Walker, a ball that spun from off stump, who is committed to play at it. And a simple chance to Chris Old at first slip. And Australia, 104 for seven. Doug Walters down the far end. He's on 19, 107 for seven, Australia. And he's given him out LBW. The quicker ball, the short one. Not unlike, in fact, the ball that he took his first wicket with, that of Ian Chappell. That's slightly further up. And five wickets to Phil Edmonds in this first test match. Well, there was no further play after 25 to 6. The rain having become heavier and heavier. And 